tell us the story <laughs> at the same time. at the same time. Now, he, now you cow. know that you can't multitask. We went through this before. We did. Well, we'll see how he does. We'll see. Hey, cool teachers! We're here at ISTE, and I'm going to find out more about Minecraft. I thought it was just those crazy little building blocks and chopping down trees, and I don't know what else it is, but. Our friend John Miller is here from Paso Robles, California, from a middle school, and he's going to tell us how he's using Minecraft, and it's in a really creative, innovative way, which is what we're finding out with all these teachers here yeah. at ISTE. They are so creative and so innovative. I love it. Okay, so I've been following him for a long time, and he's one of the super geeks uh, in the Minecraft world, um, along with some other big names, which I'm going to mention right now. I put you right up there on the Mount Rushmore of Minecraft in schools <laughs> with Peg Sheehy, with Lucas Gillespie, and of course, our buddy, right? You know what I'm going to say? Glenn Irvin, who's just okay. fabulous. Now, of course, the, the Mount Rushmore probably has many, many more name people dropper, on it. Name dropper, name dropper. So, That's all he does. Very, very, <laughs> very cool people. Well, this is nerdy to me, so yeah, I, lo I love it. i puff up a little bit. So, the heck. we want to hear more about uh, what you've got going on, but um, I thought we would add a layer of difficulty this to this, and we're going to drop you into uh, hardcore Minecraft mode. You're going to switch places with me. Oh, and my. you're, you're going to have to build a house to survive the night <laughs> while you tell us the story at the same time. at the same time now, he, now you cow. know that you can't multitask we went through this before we did well we'll see how he does we'll see how he does I'm so you've been doing some really innovative things in uh, in your school specifically with uh, literacy yeah so tell us tell us about uh, that first of all how do i get the right and left click uh, <laughs> uh, it might be uh, R on that one. R. Okay. It might be R or E. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay that's good. good. See, he's already chopping uh, down that stuff. Yeah, I am. I love teaching my kids uh, through Minecraft, but uh, the challenge has always been my students, their reading level, their writing level is much lower than it should be. I teach seventh graders. Uh, but their reading and writing level is more third grade, fourth grade. So the big challenge is how do I make the content accessible to them when the standard content that you find in, in textbooks is delivered at a much higher level than they're capable of really understanding and processing. And you'd mentioned to us as we were discussing, you've got some students um, who are, are second language learners and so, right. so they're very bright, but they just don't have as much a runway of, of English language as they do by the time they get to you. Correct, yeah. It's a predominantly Spanish-speaking community, about 98% Hispanic population, and they come to me not knowing, not having, not being proficient in English or in Spanish because they speak English at school and throughout the day and then they go home and it's a Spanish speaking. So it's really difficult to address that in schools. And I thought one way to do this would be to immerse the kids in a Minecraft world, but a Minecraft world that focuses more on yeah, the, the history content I want them to get, but it's really I'm targeting reading and writing, and I want them to leave my class feeling that they can be successful at reading, they can be successful at writing, and that it's nothing to be scared of, and that it is a creative process. So how did you use Minecraft to do that? Uh, well, I started uh, with some first some small worlds and small ideas. Uh, I teach world history and cool. medieval world history. So the very first project I did was a, a so Japanese basically Game of Thrones. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh, is that, is that very cool stuff. Uh, let's not go there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, sword, sorcery, all that could be in there. Uh, I, I jumped in with a, a project on medieval China, and there was a, a in the Tang Dynasty the capital city was named Chong'an, and the internet has great resources on the city itself, including a layout of a map of the city that had like two million people in it in the 10th century. Extraordinary. That's amazing. Mapped out beautifully on a grid system, so I had the kids, I wanted the kids to build it as a, a culminating activity for the unit. They got the information on China, and so I said, let's jump in, and I created the grid, and I put in a schematic, and a schematic in Minecraft is, uh, a, in this case, it was a giant building that somebody else built. It's very easy to put it in. It's just a copy and a paste. The Minecraft community is very sharing like that. So I found a, this beautiful giant uh, Chinese kind of palace, and I dropped it in the center, and we started at, the grid starts out with the closer the palace you were, the more uh, 
famous you were, the more important you were, the larger the build area where it was. And as you move further away from the center of town, the peasants take over, then the farmers. And this so, is all in a Minecraft world. Yes. Build this. All in a world. Uh, so the kids got put into different blocks, city blocks, and they were to build that groups, that peasant populations, buildings, or the government building, or the palace, or whatever it may be. Now, are they role playing through this? So they're playing as a member of that class? That yes, society. they were building for specific people gotcha. there. Once they got their build done, and this was 165 kids throughout five days, wow. the city evolved into this massive, beautiful structures. And then at the end of it, they got to write about who lived there. And that was kind of the culminating point was, tell me now who is there. And with Minecraft EDU, they have blocks called information blocks that you can place in front of the front door and it will tell you who lived there, what their lifestyle was like, what they like to do at when they weren't working and their jobs, what their family names were. Yeah. And it was astonishing because we turned it into a math activity. At the end of it, we went around every house and the kids got to learn who lived there. But they also did the math and we figured we'd created 2,000 people to live in this village wow. inside and out. All That's unique with personalities. And it was wow. an extraordinary experience. So that showed me what the kids could do. In five with, days. In five days, five days. Without me in it. And all just I did during was set class it up. time or do they work on just it? Just class time. They wow. wanted to come in at lunchtime, so I let them oh, come in at lunchtime <laughs> yeah. to do it too. But it was it was all no one will you for that. <laughs> Except the teacher who wants to have their lunch. Yeah. It was a great lesson to me because and we always say we've got to let the kids take over the right. learning. Let the kids and be the creators. It was, it was hard to step back and not jump in at every little movement that I didn't anticipate. Oh, I didn't think they would do that. I've got to stop the game and make them get back on what my reality was, or I was thinking was going. But I let them take it in the direction that they wanted to take it. And over five days, I'm just flying around, supporting them, encouraging them, telling them, wow, look at the way this kid built this house here. What could we learn from that? And it became a great lesson because I'm sitting in the class with the kids, playing them all. Well, now, why do you feel that this, this game improved their reading and writing or encouraged them to read and I mean, write? Couldn't you have built this city with wood and nails? Uh, we, yeah, we, we certainly could have, or at least we could have tried, I think. Uh, I think the, the, the big benefit of Minecraft is that it's, it's so immersive. As adults, we see this world very blocky, and yeah, it's fun to destroy stuff, but we're really tentative at first. We don't want to ruin anything. We don't want to break anything. Right, yeah. Kids, though, the minute they get in they here, they are it. fearless. They go through and just destroy stuff, and they're, they're testing things out to see funny? if they work. <laughs> And if they're playing in survival mode, they die, but it's not a big deal because they come right back and it's an immediate feedback for them and they try something else. As adults, we're too afraid to push ourselves to that limit. I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I want to <laughs> take a chance. Uh, that's the power of Minecraft because it once they're in the game, they are in the game. And I mentioned yeah. that I had I just stepped back. The lessons I do now, a lot of people think it's 100% of the time in Minecraft. No, there's a lot of prep to go into it right. beforehand because I am trying to anticipate what what I want my students to learn, of course, in the game, but there's all these intangibles that I know are going to pop up. And once that session starts, that Minecraft session starts, and I've done as many as, or they've been in there as many as uh, 10 days at a time, I can't stop them, I can't stop the game and redirect them, yeah. so I have to th design my lessons with that in mind. Um, and because I know they're going to go off and try different things and explore different things, and I have to be totally open to that. So that immersion is, I think, the big benefit of Minecraft. So where can people find out more about what you're doing and what you've done? Uh, I blog. Every project I do, I blog about it because I'm big on That's the a great reflection. idea, focusing yeah. it on the project rather than forcing yourself to blog every day or every yes. week or something. That makes sense. Yeah, it comes up with, it helps me because I'm constantly drafting it as the project is going oh, yeah. along. Oh, yeah. So what's your blog? What's My blog is minecraft.edtechworks.com. Ed, E-D-T-E-C. Okay. There it is on the bottom of the screen, did you see? 
Excellent. And if people want to reach out to you or follow you and hear what you have to say? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at, uh, at John Miller EDU, and it's, a, it's an amazing uh, group of people, all of us that are in the Minecraft community. We love giving, and we love sharing, and we love hearing from others and what they have to say. That's very wonderful. cool. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks, John. Reach Thank out you. to this guy. He is one of the best, in my opinion, on the, on the Mount Rushmore of Minecraft cool people. But wait a minute, he didn't finish the game. Well, uh, we'll have to do that. We'll follow up on that yeah, later. I'll keep playing. And we'll be back. All right. See you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>